In the last video I showed you how to get and save the time from your device, but what if players start cheating by messing around with their system time before starting the game? Well, just get the time from a server and maybe get creative and turn the joke on them. I think in my next game I will first get the difference between the server time and the system time, which could simply be due to a different time zone, but if at some point the game loads and that gap has grown to a few days, I will inform the player that a time traveling fee has been deducted from the in-game currency. And also the time traveling failed. The first thing we need to do is getting a super simple PHP script on a server. Don't worry if you've never even heard of PHP, this is the entire script. We define a variable called time and set it to the current time and then return that to whoever calls that script. You can just open a simple text editor like Notepad, paste it and save as a .php file. If you want to know more about PHP and getting time, this site here is really good. It includes the option to play around with scripts, which is a really good way to learn. And you can even skip all of that and use the site I'm creating for this tutorial. I will post the link in the description. But of course I can guarantee this script will always be there, so if you use this for a published game, you should definitely do it on your own server where you have full control. My last site was actually blocked and I'm not sure why, maybe because I used this for a free game that ended up getting 20,000 plays. So maybe it looked suspicious to have 20,000 requests for a site that is pretty much empty. Anyhow, just about any freeware post will do, as long as it wants PHP scripts. So just google something like free web host PHP. I mean, it doesn't have to be free if you actually want to pay for it. And I went with 00 web host and what I like about their site is that it takes you straight to file manager, which is the easiest way to get your script up and running. If you use 00 web host, go to the file manager and create an index.html file in this folder. You can just click here and create a no, new file, uh, no need to put anything in there. And in the same folder you can upload the PHP script or just create a new one and paste the code. And of course name it something like time.php. Now if you open the correct address, there is our time. And this is why you can use my link inside your Unity game, it is open to anyone. It doesn't matter if a browser or a game engine is asking for it. Now back in Unity we need to make a web request. You can just do it in the time manager from the last video or make a new script. The web request is done in a coroutine, which is a method that can pause itself. To make a coroutine, we need to use iEnumerator as return value. Then we need the web address as a string and pass that string into Unity web request as a parameter. And to use that, we also need to include the unity.networking namespace. And here is the waiting part. We wait until that gives us a result. You can define a maximum time you want to wait by saying web request.timeout and let's say 3 seconds. So when we get result or 3 seconds have passed, whatever comes first, the part below the yield return will be executed. If this were somehow a normal method and you wait for 3 seconds, it means that the rest of your game code would have to wait too, freezing the game because the frame doesn't finish calculating. And that's why coroutines are really awesome. They allow the rest of the code to keep running and thus join back later on. Then we extract the string out of the web request download handler, which is exactly what the website from before shows. And I did use a PHP time format that I know can be converted to the date time I showed you in the last video. I will use try pass though, because something could be wrong with the server or the address has changed and you might get all kinds of strings here. So let's use try pass in an if statement and in here we can declare an out variable on the fly. Then take that, convert it back to a string and print it out. Lastly we need to trigger this method and that is done by start coroutine and then enter the name of the coroutine. 
And there you have it, the time comes from a server that the player can't mess with. So no more 20 daily achievements in one hour or instantly progressing a year in an idle game. The time zone here by the way is GMT. I hope you learned something and you would do me a big favor by subscribing to this channel and liking the video. If you have any questions, feedback or suggestions on what I should do a video on, let me know in the comments. Thank you and goodbye.